Hello, this is Rebecca Wangle and April Troglauer. Today we will be exploring listing maps through Jamboard. Jamboard is a web app that can be used to facilitate cross-curricular learning in so many ways, as well as provide more hands-on learning for your students. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our late related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Let's get ready to explore Jamboard. Thanks, Rebecca. Before we get into learning some tips and tricks for Jamboard, let's talk about what a listening map is. Um, Abigail Eckstein is an artist and a design manager, and I just love her definition of what a listening map is. A listening map is an interactive visual representation of musical sounds and concepts designed to help children recognize and identify elements of music. I love um, that we can incorporate some creativity and some music really into any classroom. So uh, we're going to talk about how to create listening maps specifically using the technology of Jamboard. So here's some tips as you're beginning your journey in Jamboard that I think will be helpful to you. First of all, I like to let students claim a board. So when you open up Jamboard, you can have as many as 20 boards set up and you can assign a student to a board if you like, or I like to just give them the link and tell them to claim a board, have them put their name at the bottom and that's going to be their workspace. I always set clear expectations for my students uh, to keep their work either on brainstorming pages that we have set up or their board only. We want to make sure that students are uh, representing only their work on their board. And Jamboard is collaborative by nature, so I like to let the students explore. Some students need inspiration to create, and so letting the students flip through the boards that their classmates are working on, for me, that is okay. So let them go and explore a little bit. When we're doing independent work in Jamboard, it's easy for the students to get caught up looking instead of working. So another tip that I have for you is set clear time limits for independent work, and that will help keep your students on track. As your students are working, flip through the boards and watch what they're doing. So in the case of working with listening maps, we really are creating art here. So remember, there's no wrong in art, but the work that your students are giving you can fall short of your defined expectations. Do not be afraid to redirect students as they're working in their Jamboard. And of course, something that I like to do as a reflective piece for myself, make a board where everyone can respond and give their opinion. Have students drop an emoji on how they felt about the project. Um, let them, you know, take a picture of their face and put a selfie up there that shows the facial expression for how they're feeling about the work that they're doing. And this is just a great way for you to have some student reflection to use as you are planning future activities using Jamboard. And remember, Jamboard only allows 20 pages, so if you have more students, you can split and have two students working on a board at a time or, of course, have two Jamboards working at the same time. So now that we've given you some tips on how to create your Jamboard or when you're creating your Jamboard, let's go ahead and dive into showing you all these different tools that Jamboard has to offer. So before I dive into these tools on the left side, I want you to go ahead and take a look at the top where it says 12, 1 out of 12. You can have up to 20 different boards on here per class. So if you have a class of 30 or 35, you're gonna to need to make more than one Jamboard and watch them as you are teaching this activity. So we made a good Jamboard about Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. And in this Jamboard activity, they're going to be listening to music and also practicing the styles of Chinese painting during this, this pre-activity prior to our project. So I'm going to go ahead and move to those slides. For timing purposes, I am not going to be going over these different types of painting styles with you, but I will be going over a few of these tools that you see on the left. So the first one is going to be something that my students will use a lot, which is the pen. You have four different widths on here for your drawing tools. You have the pen, you have the marker, which is a little bit thicker and a little bit darker. You also have a highlighter, which is great for not just art, but any subject area when you're using a Jamboard for an activity, as well as the paintbrush, which is gonna be something that we use a lot in this listing map that we've created. The great thing about the paintbrush is that you also can create layers to ensure those value changes. Now the next tool is the eraser. I do encourage for 
students to use an ad a device such as like a Chromebook or an iPad for them to be able to do that faster, but this will erase just fine. You also have the sticky note tool, which you can leave as they're working. You can leave positive notes on their jam boards. Great job. And that can go right there, which is awesome. You also have a place where they can upload images if they want to recreate a certain painting that they saw or something along those lines. You have the shape tool, which is great for another activity, or if, for instance, if you are in language arts and you want to create a Venn diagram for them to create. You have a text box that they can use, and then also you have this laser. The laser is a great tool to use because you can also redirect them. So if there is an area where you feel like they need to go back and redo or you want them to revisit, you can use the laser to show them on their own Jamboard. But those are just a few different tools on the Jamboard that you can use. And now I'm going to throw it to April to give you the steps that you need to create these listening maps. Now that Rebecca's given you some tools in Jamboard, let's talk about how we're going to create a listening map. The first thing you're going to want to do with your students is to build some context about the topic. You saw our example was Chinese New Year, so we taught our students a little history of Chinese New Year and some of the traditions. So think about how you can incorporate a listening map into some new content you are going to teach. You're going to want to choose your piece of music and watch the entire video first before you start working. Have the students practice creating drawings to represent the distinct sounds in the music. In our example, we were asking students to use traditional Chinese artwork styles. So have a place in your Jamboard where students can practice. And then of course, lastly, you're gonna have students create their own listening map. So these are some great steps. So let's look at some guidelines. I like to specify the number of drawings that you would expect to see for a given piece of music. You want to guide students through creating reflecting and refining their listening map. Uh, if there's any ELA teachers watching, that's probably some of the same steps you're expecting your students to do when they're writing. So we are reinforcing these good learning techniques. Listen to the piece of music without drawing. Listen again and begin a third time to complete and then refine what you're doing from there. I like to also have the piece of music available for students to listen asynchronously at their own pace if they need some more time to work. A great option with this is you can have the students present their listening map and defend their artistic choices. So this is a wonderful way where if you're asking for specific colors or styles, students can reflect on what they've done and express their work in a different way. So let's see what this looks like in Jamboard. So you saw our Chinese listening map Jamboard here. Rebecca showed you a little bit about using the tools. This would be a great place, once again, We've got a spot for students to practice their drawing. Second type of Chinese drawing here, another place for students to practice. And then of course, here would be what a board would look like for the students. You notice that I've put a background in there that has eight squares. And that is telling me and it's telling the students I expect eight individual drawings or eight separate ideas as we're listening to the music. And of course, a place for the name at the bottom. You can set backgrounds right here by choosing set background and you can upload a picture that will go along with however many um, individual drawings you're expecting students to create. So this would be where they would use the tools and create their listening map. Each square would represent something distinct that's happening in the music. And so when students are doing their listening and refining after they've done their initial drawings, they can see, oh, okay, does this image that I have created uh, match the mood, the tone, the timbre of what's happening in the music? Really a great way to incorporate some art and, of course, music into your curriculum. This is just a quick, um, quick little uh, word map here of some of the different topics that we have discussed and where we could use uh, a listening map to help reinforce these topics with our students. So think of the different ways and maybe content in your area that could benefit from exploring Jamboard and from adding a little bit of music and art. So use this time to think. If you want to pause the video now and think a little bit about how you can use everything that you've just learned, the steps, the tips, the tools to create a listening map for your own content area, 
or how to bridge it between different content areas throughout your student's curriculum. If you have any questions or need any guidance throughout your own listening map, please feel free to reach out to April or myself. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't have to miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Dear Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog. Thank you.